My grandpa is 89 years old, and he still manages to learn something new pretty much every day. I know this firsthand because he usually keeps his laptop with him at the table, and whenever we get to the point in a conversation where we can't remember who wrote a particular ragtime song, or who usually played the comic characters in Shakespeare's acting company, he will Google it, or he'll make someone with a phone Google it. Before we had laptops and smartphones, my grandpa would run to his office when he had a question and look it up on his iMac. And before that, my mom tells me, he had a full set of world book encyclopedias lined up on his bookshelf. My grandpa reminds me that learning isn't just something that happens in an organized environment, like a class. Learning is something that happens whenever you get curious about something. You can see my learning battle station here. I've got my work from home double monitors. I've got my six foot tall bookshelf that I just got that's already full. I feel so blessed to be able to read what I want, to look up what I want, to go wherever my curiosity takes me. Which is why it matters so much to me that some of the most vulnerable people in this country are denied the resources to do this. People in jails and prisons spend most of their time in cells which average 70 square feet, sometimes even smaller, and for many people this also includes the toilet and sink. Cell phones and the internet are banned, although some prisoners in California have access to an overpriced email and music streaming service, courtesy of a prison contractor. Packages from home are heavily restricted. Prison libraries are often under-resourced or non-existent. So how can incarcerated people access knowledge? This is why I've chosen to support the Prison Book Program for this year's Project for Awesome. The Prison Book Program is a small nonprofit based in Massachusetts. Through the work of two paid staff members and an army of volunteers, last year they were able to donate over 29,000 books to people in jails and prisons in 44 states. Prisoners or their family members or friends can write to them with requests for specific titles or topics, and the program does their best to send them a donated book that matches their interests. They also send legal primers to people who are working on appeals, and their most requested items are dictionaries so they buy about 2,000 of those each year wholesale. Those dictionaries are proof to me that incarcerated people are not only ready to learn, they're ready to teach themselves. The PVP website tells me that Malcolm X taught himself how to read and write while in prison by copying a dictionary. But of course, everyone has their own needs and interests. On their testimonials page, one incarcerated man told the PVP that reading the diary of Anne Frank inspired him to learn more about the Holocaust and gave him the hope he needed to beat a lifelong addiction and dedicate the rest of his life to serving others. I might not understand why reading a book about the Holocaust would give someone hope, but a person trapped in a small space with an urge to express himself and think through his feelings might read the diary of Anne Frank very differently from me. Which I think is the point of the prison book program, letting people pursue their own curiosity. I believe that access to knowledge is a human right. Even if you believe that people deserve to be in prisons, it benefits society to have more incarcerated people reading and thinking. So please consider voting for the Prison Book Program in this year's Project for Awesome. The link to vote is in the doobly-doo. You'll also find links to the Prison Book Program website and their online wish lists.